spent a lot of time on a sketch but now are hesitant to ink it? I'll show you how to go from here to here without ruining your sketch. Stay tuned. <music> here and welcome back to my channel. Before we get started, check out my artwork at the galleries and social media sites next to me on the side here. And don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. And as always, there's free comics waiting for you in the link in the description box below. So don't forget to sign up for them. So for the longest time, inking in pencils was such a huge dilemma for me. As someone who still pretty much works traditionally, sometimes the last thing I wanted to do was to alter what I thought was a pretty good pencil sketch with ink. I'm sure you know the moment when you realize that the sketch had just something to it that doesn't translate in the inking. Except now you don't have the sketch anymore to refer to because it's been inked over. Now, of course, this hasn't been that much of an issue with the advent of digital art. Now your sketches can be on a separate layer while your ink's on, on another. But if you're still some of the what seems to be the few people still working with pencil and paper, this is obviously not something that we can do in real life. Although admit it though, you tried to hit the control Z command on a piece of paper without thinking about it, right? Back before I figured out this hack, I was drawing and inking my comic book pages on the same paper. What I ended up having a problem with is not only was erasing the pencils damaging to the integrity of the inks, but sometimes I knew the pencils were a lot better than what my final inking result was. And the only way to redo anything was to actually redo from scratch whatever panel I was trying to fix. Later on, I learned that if I used blue line pencils, I didn't need to erase anything because I could digitally remove the lines in Photoshop and keep my inking intact. But I took this a step further by using my sketches to create digital blue lines that I would then print onto my paper and ink separately from the sketches. That way, if something went wrong, all I had to do was reprint the sketch and fix whatever I needed without starting completely over. Now, I'm going to assume you have some type of digital program where you can digitally manipulate your scanned sketches. In my case, I am using Photoshop. For the final print, I have two choices. If I want to print on actual Bristol paper for my comic book work for, or for more detailed pieces, I use my Canon PIXMA Pro 100 as it can do oversized printing and print on heavier stock paper. However, you don't need a fancy printer. If you have a standard inkjet printer, I also have the HP OfficeJet Pro 8600, you can make your own blue lines from that as well. For standard inkjet printers, I recommend using Hammermill Premium Color Copy Cover in 60 pound cardstock. What I learned was that this paper was being used as a dupe for the Copic blending card paper. This is also the same paper I use in my multi-liner comparison video, which I will link above here. You can also take this hack a step further and print your inks on this paper and use your markers to color without worrying about line bleed. Now I'm going to show you how I make my blue lines. So here's the scan of the artwork that we're going to use. As you can see, I used two different colored pencils to do this piece, a red and a blue. But what I want to do is I want to turn all the lines into blue. So now we're going to go to adjustments, levels, and what we're gonna do is we're going to adjust these little nodes so that we clean up the line work a bit. We're gonna make the background lighter and we're going to punch up the lines a bit. So we're just gonna keep adjusting until I get to a setting that I like and then I'm going to click okay. Next, we're going to go back to Image, Adjustments, and then we're going to go to Hue and Saturation. And what we're going to do is we're going to colorize the piece. So check that box. And now we're going to change the settings. So the hue we're going to set at 185 to get the blue color that we need. 
I know it doesn't look blue yet, but that's why we have to change the saturation. So we're gonna change this to 100% and now we have the cyan blue that we're looking for. Now this next part's a little tricky. We're gonna do this at 90% and I know that you can't see anything on the screen or it's very hard to because it's very, very light. But trust me on this one, when you print it out, it'll print exactly at the lightness that you're going to need on the paper. You might need to experiment a bit with the lightness and how it prints out so that you don't get a print that's too dark to ink on. Now we're gonna start inking. As you can see, you don't want the blue lines to print out too dark or else it actually gets in the way of you actually seeing your inking. Now we're just gonna go through the time lapse where at the end I will show you how to remove the blue line from your image digitally so that all you're left with is the black ink lines. Now we scanned in the final ink piece. And as you can see, we now have blue and red as two colors we want to get rid of. Now the reason why we didn't just scan this in in black and white is because the blue and the red would have turned into shades of gray, which would have been really hard to take out. So even though we're going to end up with a final black and white piece, we want to scan the piece in color so that we get all the colors we want to get rid of. So now we're going back to image mode and converting the image to CMYK. What this does is that it narrows down the colors uh, to four colors, cyan, yellow, magenta, and black, which will make it very easy to remove all the colors we don't want. Now we're gonna go back to image, we're gonna go to adjustments, and we're going to go to levels. And here is where we're going to start removing colors. So now go to the CMYK tab, and here are the three colors we're going to be removing. So first, we're going to go to cyan, and we're going to lower 
cyan all the way to the left, which removes it from the image. And then we're gonna go back and we're gonna do the same thing to magenta and yellow. Now we're going to go to black and do the exact opposite. We're going to go to the right and punch up the black color. Don't go too far to the right or you'll make your lines muddy. So stick around this particular area for the best result. Then click OK. Now as you can see, there are no other colors but black in the image. At this point, I like to convert the image to grayscale and then take it one step further and then convert it to bitmap. What this does is that it turns any gray that is left in the image into black. But be careful when you do this. If you have a lot of fine detail, you may lose them. So this might not be a good option for some pieces. And now here's the final ink piece that I get to use however I want and I still have the original sketch to work from. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. So until the next video, bye!